Hi there, Dr. Terry Shaneyfelt from UAB School of Medicine. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate how to calculate a patient-specific number needed to treat. Now, the number needed to treat you're used to dealing with is for patients in that particular study. But what happens if the patient you're seeing in the office or in the hospital is at higher or lower risk than those in the study? Well, you'd want to calculate a number needed to treat that's more meaningful, that's specific to your individual patient's baseline risk. And there's two ways to do that. One I call the estimation method, and the other is the peer method. So let's focus first on the estimation method. So to calculate the number need to treat that's specific to your individual patient, we're going to use the number need to treat from the study. And I've already taken the liberty to calculate this for the Rouse trial. And if you can't remember how to calculate a number need to treat, you can review a previous video I've made on this topic. So you take the number need to treat from the study and divide it by this F or fudge factor or fraction. And what F reflects is your estimate of how more or less likely it is that your patient is to develop the outcome than the placebo group of patients in the study. So if you feel your patient is two times uh, more likely to develop the outcome, F will be two. If you feel your patient is half as likely to develop the outcome, F will be 0.5. So let's do an example. So let's say we think our patient is twice as likely, in this case, to die than the patients in the study. So the number needed to treat from the study is nine. And because I feel they're two times more likely, I'm going to divide that by two, which equals 4.5. And we always round up our number needed to treat. So instead of having nine patients, we now have less patients because our patient is sicker. So it makes sense, a higher risk person, we have should, should have to treat less of them uh, to gain benefit. Well, what if my patient was half as likely to develop the outcome as those in the study? So I'd use the study NNT, which was nine, and I would express half as a fraction. And now when I make this calculation, it comes out to 18. So instead of having nine patients, I have to give spironolactone to prevent one additional bad outcome. Because my patient is at less risk, I'm going to have to treat twice as many of them uh, to prevent one additional death in patients like mine. Now, the other method to do this is called the PEER method. And the PEER method is a little bit more complex formula. So the number needed to treat patient-specific will be 1 over our peer or patient expected event rate times the relative risk reduction from the study. And I have the relative risk reduction up here from the RAL study for uh, total mortality. If you need to uh, refresh your memory on how to calculate a relative risk reduction, I also have a video on that topic also using this same uh, RAL's data. So where do we get this peer or patient expected event rate from? Well, there's a few places. One, um, maybe there's a subgroup in this particular study uh, that we're using that is similar to our patient. We could use the control event rate in that subgroup. Uh, what I like to do is to find validated clinical prediction rules and plug in my patient's data and see what their risk is. You also may be able to find a, a study that has patients like yours uh, that are untreated that looks at the prognosis of these patients and you could use the data from that study. So there's a variety of places you could get this peer. Uh, let's run an example. So let's take um, and say I ran my patient through a clinical prediction rule and it came out that his expected event rate for in this case death was uh, 90% and I would express that as a decimal of 0.9. I'd multiply that by the relative risk reduction which was 24%. And when I make this calculation, it comes out to be uh, 4.6. And again, we'll round up to 5. So let's do another example where my patient is maybe at um, less risk than those in the study through a clinical prediction rule. And let's say it comes out to 0.23% um, risk or 23% risk of death. I multiply it again by the relative risk reduction from the study. And when I make this calculation, it comes out to about 18. So I purposely made um, this patient's um, numbers look the same because doing the same calculation in two different ways should give me the same number. They shouldn't come out different. So hopefully this um, patient-specific number need to treat calculations will be something that you'll do so that you can practice a little bit more patient-centered um, care. And it just makes more sense because unless your patient is similar to those in that particular study, you really should think about calculating a patient-specific number needed to treat so that you can make better decisions 
uh, in deciding on whether or not to use a therapy in your individual patient.